Ditch Joe Power Farms the latest ready dog group. Are you feeling stuck with your gun dog training? Trust me, you're not alone and that's exactly why you need to be here. Every week we're bringing you the best tips and hacks to make training your gun dog easy peasy. We'll keep it straightforward, no fuss, just actionable guidance that you can put straight to use. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of Found It Fetched It. This week we're going to be talking to Lucy from On The Peg all about her business and about Field Sports 24. So how are you today, Lucy? Hi, Joe. Thank you for having me on. I'm really good, thank you. I'm really excited about this conversation. I'm really excited to talk to you about it too, because obviously we're going to be talking about Field Sports 24, which has been like a creative inspiration of yours, which I think is fab, but also about your now running on the peg and like what you want to do with that, so start putting everybody back a little bit before all this though tell us a bit more about yourself Mm, yes so growing up I was immersed in all aspects of country life from stalking shooting and beating and picking up and I loved it but it always wasn't really easy in such a male dominated industry I did often find myself fighting to be seen and heard people would always raise an eyebrow in surprise when they saw me handling gun assumed it was for somebody else but those challenges really did fuel my determination I didn't know exactly what you mean when I went beating with my dad I can remember going on a shoot and a guy saying to my father who's this your wife now, bearing in mind that either meant I looked really old or my father looked like some sort of, I don't know, skirt to chase. I'm not really sure. But there was no perception of the fact that being his daughter, I might have just wanted to go out and spend the day with my father. or like, And he didn't ask me, the guy didn't ask me why I was there. He just like almost dismissed me and just asked my father, the man, why this woman was on the field with dogs. And I can remember thinking, oh, that's not a very nice behaviour. You know what it's like, do you? There was a really pivotal moment for me when a close friend expressed her interest in joining me beating. From that first day, she was absolutely hooked. So we went to find her some clothing because I remember she came in a really old beaten barber that I think her father had and some trousers with holes and she was just soaking wet but wasn't put off. So I went with my, took my friend to find something for her to wear that was suitable for her to carry on uh, beating with me but it was really difficult online to find anything because we weren't able to pick uh, the sizing and there was no real guide to what sizing was available what fitting she would have because she's very tiny she's only five foot and a very small little lady so we had to find four or five different brands for her to go to so I knew about on the peg clothing because I'd already shopped with the previous owner Sora who was fantastic and I had a conversation with her and said I this is what I'd like to do. I would like to set up my own brand, but obviously know you're on the market yourself. And we had an honest conversation and she said, actually, I'd really like you to take it on. She herself having kids and a couple of other businesses and several dogs, just life got very busy. So I bit her hand off at the opportunity. So my friend is now fully kitted out with some amazing brands that we handpick ourselves and she does a lot of modelling for us as well, which is fantastic because we have a variety of sizes. It is really difficult, isn't it? Like when we first got involved with the brand before you owned it yourself, it was the bespoke service of helping somebody, whatever they size, whatever they shape, to be fitted. Because I know the same thing. I'm five foot and a fart. And like literally finding clothes that suit women, it tends to be really difficult, especially with the brands that are coming from Europe, where I think most of the women must be like Vikings and seven foot tall. <laughs> I get trousers and their knees are like where my ankles are. And I'm like, this isn't going to work. Yeah, 100%. And that is something that's very frustrating for us. So to get around this, we put fitting notes on all of our products. We tr- get All of my friends come and join me for a session of trying on the clothing, what looks good, what doesn't look good. So we are very transparent when people want to have a piece of clothing or they know what they're looking for. We will let them know that one brand will fit them or we try and steer them towards a brand that we know 
will look good on them and actually fit them. Like you say, we do have Laxin, which is a European brand, which is lovely, but you do have to be that little bit taller and have those longer torsos. And we have Fortis, who are a British brand, which who have the most brilliant items, which fit a variety of people. And they do six size six from 22. We do try our best and we do come on and have webinars with people to show people the items. We are online, so we do know that people want to see the pieces of clothing on so i'll try them on and people can see them virtually so it's a it's such a nice service and we love offering our customers as much as we can and that is really lovely because being able to talk to someone and say look these are the problems i face and then see them showing you the clothing and seeing how it all works it just gives you that confidence that what arrives in the mail is what you wanted Exactly, exactly that, yeah. So how long have you been in charge now, Lucy? It's been just over a year. I think the Game Fair was our year anniversary. What are your sort of ideas? Because obviously it takes time to settle into uh, a brand that's got some reputation set up for it and then putting your stamp on it and knowing where you want to take it. What are your sort of plans for it now you're solidly at the helm? Yeah, so we've been doing a lot of guest blogs with inspiring women across the industry, which a lot of people have absolutely loved. And it, doing more of those and just understanding their journeys and talking a little bit more about people in different industries, uh, letting them have their say and have their voice on a platform. So that's really exciting. We've sponsored a lot of ladies' days. Again, not just in the shooting, but in fishing and gun dog days and just fostering that sort of sense of community and support and doing a little bit more of those shows. So if you do see us, please come and say hello. We are very friendly. Yeah, absolutely. And like the conversation we're going to go on to have, which is about Field Sports 24, that came from me coming to say hi to you and, and you know, this whole like camaraderie, co-partnership working. It works incredibly well for us all. Tell us your idea for Fields Force 24, because it was at the game fair this year that you mm-hmm. talked about all about it, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. I've been having this idea about Field Sports 24 for uh, about three years now. And I thought I just needed to just say to somebody, so you, yourself and Tanya from the Country Girls were, were on our stand and I thought this is a perfect opportunity to just put it out there and see what the appetite is. And you both bit my arm off and I couldn't be more excited. So it's, it's a really groundbreaking initiative that celebrates and promotes field sports across the whole of the UK. The event seeks to emulate the success of Farm 24. The campaign and initiative is due to take place on Tuesday the 1st of October in 2024. So what we're asking you to do is please just come on your social platforms and share a day in the life of, whether that's working your dogs, whether that's beating or fishing, or if you run a clay ground, highlighting what you do, inviting people to come and ask you questions because we want to reach beyond the usual audience encouraging new participants from diverse backgrounds to not only discover the joys and benefits of field sports but to perhaps also take that on if they've been thinking about it in the background this is open to to everybody and we're really excited about it so we like we yabbered about it on the stand and then then we all came away from it all excited the benefits i could see of it was absolutely the fact that People don't realise sometimes they're involved in field sports when they are involved in field sports. Mm. So for example, you can be buying your venison burger in your local supermarket and that's probably come from field sports somewhere. And Or you're buying your fares and breasts and that's come from field sports. Or you're buying a, a cushion that's got, you know, like a, a fares and feather design and that's come from field sports it's all like indirectly and directly linked when you told me about this idea I was like oh, it's so needed for people to understand and break down the perception that field sports means rich old men shouting tally-ho going across a field trying to kill everything because that's mm-hmm. not what it's about is it no 100% for most of us who've got involved in field sports 
we have fallen in love with a part of it. So tell me a little bit more about your shooting. Like, how did you get into shooting? From a really young age, actually, I remember I got a gun shoved in my hands and it was far too big for me and the recall pad shoved me over. So, I, But for some reason, I stuck with it and I loved it. And I really enjoyed being out in standing out in the middle of a field with a lot of men and being able to shoot better than them. I did get a lot of stick, though, and a lot of that perception of you shouldn't be here and a lot of that gossip in my ear, but that did fuel me to just keep going. And I remember I got a couple of dogs and worked them in the field. Mm -hmm. Minorities make people feel a little bit awkward. But bear in mind we're talking about field sports. They are in the minority. And on the whole, everyone getting involved, without a doubt, has a fabulous day. So for you, obviously, you're a good shot. Question that one. <laughs> <laughs> You've got dogs, so you work. Is this a passion that's, like, for me, is all-consuming working my dogs? Is it like that for you with your sort of guns and your dogs? A hundred percent. My whole life is consumed by field sports. My partner, who actually helps me with on the pet clothing He'd never shot before, he'd never worked gun dogs, and a second he was with me, it was, you're joining this with me, you're participating in shooting and working the dogs, or you cannot be with me. It was a non-negotiable. And he himself is so passionate and absolutely loves it. He's getting his friends involved as well. So it's, yeah, it's really a great feeling to get even just one additional person involved in the industry. Yeah, and so many people come to us like, Ladies join the Leeds Working Dog Group and they say, oh, I'm never going to be part of field sports. I just want to train my dog. And we're like, yeah, absolutely fine. And we mean that sincerely. There's a large portion of our ladies who will never step foot on the state. They'll never be part of that side of it. That's absolutely cool. But then there's a small portion where we go, okay, you've gone from never wanting to do this to now asking like, okay, so shall I go to a trial? Mm. where would my nearest shoot be and then suddenly we see them come over and then we see photos of them out with their dogs and doing loads of stuff and just having a ball of time which we know because we're part of it as well mm. and there's something so lovely about that isn't there there is and actually you just reminded me when I worked in corporate I felt it was very I shouldn't say anything about what I do in case it came up with a negative connotation but I got brave one day and I spoke about it and I started talking to groups of people about shooting and, and fishing and gun, working my gun dogs. And it was very, oh, no, I wouldn't do that. But they were buying a chicken sandwich from, from the supermarket. So we were talking a little bit about actually where does your food come from? And I brought in some pheasant goujons that I'd made from the shoot that I would participated in a couple of days before. Uh, I didn't tell them what it was and they really enjoyed it. So like you said earlier, where your food actually comes from. Um, one lady uh, had a, has a dog and I took her to a couple of lessons and we were doing a little bit of recall. Who, the dog totally pulled and she just let the dog do what it wants. Actually bringing in that training, bringing in that little bit of reinforcement, the dog was incredible and she actually really enjoyed the dog now. It was more of a her friend rather than this thing. It was a flipping nightmare along with the kids and yeah she ended up working a couple of times in the field on just because of having that conversation in the office so yeah, it's really fascinating when you start having the honest and transparent conversation with people where they're willing to go and I think that's again what Field Sports 24 is about and I know there's loads of organizations who work incredibly hard on this all year round like Eat Wild they're constantly trying to help people to understand about the food side of it but there is that little bit that you just touched upon there which is we don't know whether we should or shouldn't say something to people about what we do because we don't want to be stereotyped or prejudged which is sad but then I think if we don't show people what we do or don't show even if it's part of it here I am getting dog training because I want my dog to be great on the state you don't have to show the things that maybe people would find graphic you can just talk and allude to it to allow people to know there's just more of us doing it, isn't there? Mm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, man on the head. 
do you think like obviously this is going to be the first ever field sports 24 so it's the launch of something new but it hasn't got massive corporate backing with millions of pounds for advertising this really is us three just starting it somewhere do you see this becoming a long-term thing because i'd love to think that'll happen 100 percent. i am confident that this is going to be an annual event that we all participate in on the 1st of October and we all get excited by it. We've had a lot of people already jump on board this. We've had the Shooting Times already get excited by it, Guns on Pegs. We don't need a big backing, big funding for this because I think we've got enough voices of our own and to have a platform to for us all to have a voice, everybody is very exciting and I'm really excited by this and to see everybody's posts and see what they've come on to say and talk about their journeys and what they do. Yeah. And obviously there's that part of like social media where they over censor uh, things that we can and can't see, but we can show our lives without needing to show the sense of stuff. Can we? And I always think this, I don't think there's anything wrong with showing the outcome of a day, but I would rather see a pheasant casserole than maybe see a carcass simply because not that I've got anything against it I came from a small old inner group on a farm our sheep's years used to come back from the butchers with the rest of them right that I'm not squeamish with that but I am aware that for some people that might be the bit that pushes it over the edge of them so I'd rather show them the sustainability of it and the fun mm. of it than maybe the parts that we know we should be able to see but but we can't show it yet Mm -hmm. yeah I, I totally get that and yeah it's, you touched on something there that we're all struggling with that the, the matter of banning a couple of words that we were all not allowed to touch upon but we, we're finding ways around it and actually using the terminology field sports means that we can still all participate but even if if you're running a shoot if you're dogging in on the day what does that actually mean because a lot of people might just see you pushing some birds and frightening them but what are you doing and why are you doing it give that give a little bit of an educational piece if you're running a clay shoot what questions people need to ask because if they go in totally ignorant and don't know anything about shooting at all or guns or what questions they need to ask what they need to know people don't like the unknown with a gun dog where do you go what what sort of things should you be doing and actually are there any pieces of guidance you can give to people that are going out and training their dogs at the moment it's, it's september but it, it's very warm still and it's very warm for a dog what, what health benefits and how can you look after your dog little things like that as well it is super important that people overlook and back to that field to sport but actually that wider aspect of this yeah, and this isn't like a ladies only thing, is it? This is, oh, we are predominantly three organisations that work with women. This is like everyone involved in field sports. We just using the hashtag field sports 24, just showing the things that you go and do on your day, just so people can start going, oh, well, what is that? Like you said, what are they doing there? Why are they getting their dog to retrieve a dummy out of water? And I, I think there would be this massive, genuine interest if we show all the aspects of the makes up what we do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm really, like I said, I'm really excited to see what and uh, what everybody's doing and opening that, those questions to the audience and see if they've got anything to ask you. Yeah, I'm sure yourself, myself, Tanya, we'll all have something on social media where people can send us questions and we can answer it, etc. But also... We're available all year, aren't we? we this, although this is one day that we're doing the hashtag Field Sports 24, we are always here to answer people's questions. And I'm hoping that people listening to us can see that we're friendly and we want to help them understand. And like Field Sports 24 is not just a UK thing, is it? I can always remember this story, and I'm sure I've told it before to our members. A lady sent me a picture of a dead mountain cat. And I was a little bit like, oh my God, that mountain cat is dead. A little bit like, I wasn't expecting it, but I didn't know people hunted mountain cat. And I was like, what's the sustainability of that? What's the reason for it? I asked lots of questions. She, this is why we hunt them. They go in the freezer. This is what we do. And I was like, absolutely fascinated. Now, if I hadn't had an open mind to that and what was going on, what was involved in the, her process, 
I would have just thought, oh my God, that woman has shot a cat. I would not have been open to understanding the whole thing behind it. And I think this is what we're trying to do, isn't it? Is get people to ask questions. What are you doing and why? Yeah, and they're the, so important, those questions. And we should be answering them as well and promoting that side. We get a lot of people from the US asking questions. They really love this British side. But actually, it's not just for us Brits. It, it, it is, like you said, it, it is open to everybody. Um, it just happens to be that 5 a.m. on the 1st of October works very well for us. But it actually opens up that international side as well. So 5 a.m., works for the America and Australia and, and New Zealand because again they're also involved we get a lot of customers also from New Zealand wanting to know more about the sport so yeah we're always open our channels are open social media or our phones are always open for calls and we're very friendly <laughs> I promise you <laughs> I think the one thing as well I'm looking forward to is seeing like you said people's days but also being able to share those days so for people listening we want them to like like other people's stuff where they have used the hashtag go look for the hashtag use it themselves don't feel can use it themselves like we've got a great podcast episode on do i fit into the gun dog world and we recorded the episode because somebody asked oh if i'm training a gun dog in london do i fit into this again perception this countryside sport thing we were like yeah of course you are because you're training your dog to go and do this and I think it's breaking down all these barriers of understanding of what field sports are like the fishing side of it like all the other parts of it we want everybody to get involved don't we yeah I love that I'm gonna have to go and listen to that episode <laughs> it was a fabulous episode to record but reading her email to me was really sad because I thought I hated the thought and this again taught me quite a lot I thought we did everything possible in our organisation to break down these barriers of people understanding everyone's welcome. And it made me feel a little bit like, do we, if somebody in London doesn't Mm. see that? Again, we can always learn, and we can all learn from this day, how to constantly show what we do in a way that keeps on educating. That educational piece, I love it. I can't, yeah. On next Tuesday from 5am, we're going to be incredibly busy, putting up different stuff that we're doing. We'd love for everybody to get involved. Lucy, what do you want people to do? Other than the hashtagging, come find us on social. Do we have a plan of what we want people to do? Yeah, come and find myself, Joe, and Tanya on our socials. We'll be sharing all of your stories, all of your posts. Like Joe said, please go and check out the hashtag FieldSports24. And get your friends involved. This help us spread the message. Yeah. Fabulous. I will pop in the show notes of this listeners, the our hashtags, our, our Instagram tags, and our website. Please get involved. Please let us know what you think about it. Please let us know if there's anything we can do to help you understand it more. Thank you, Lucy, for coming on and talking to us. Can you give everybody your website if they want to come and see your clothing? Yeah, of course. It's on the pigclothing.co.uk. And Joe, thank you so much for inviting me on and jumping on this campaign with me. I am so thankful to have your support and Tanya's support. Thank you for allowing us to be part of it. When you told us about it, I was like, oh my God, this is great. Mm-hmm. And I can genuinely see where it can go. If you look at the success of Farm 24, like the t-shirts, the hoodies, everybody standing up, I definitely see the positive impact of that day on everyone's understanding of farming, including mine. Like even I watch Farm 24 and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know about that. I didn't know about that. So if I'm doing that with Farm 24 and I think I come from somewhat of a rural background and I'm super excited, I know Field Sports 24 will be as exciting for other people to find out about what we do. Yeah. We hope you've all enjoyed listening. It has been fantastic talking to Lucy. Hopefully you will all join in with us next Tuesday. Um, Let us know what you think. Give us your feedback. Please subscribe. Please review. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. That's it for today's episode. A massive thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to head over to the LWDG and sign up for our membership. Get access to expert-led training, a wonderfully supportive community and the resources you need to become a confident and skilled gun dog trainer. Let's take this journey together because no woman should have to train her gun dog alone. 
We'll see you all next week.